Well, good morning. This is Pastor Aaron of Christ Church, and you are watching Daily Bread, a short daily devotional to help us fix our eyes on Jesus. I've been a pastor for more than 20 years, and I'm doing this because it is my hope and prayer that God's people, despite COVID-19, would stay connected to the body of Christ and the Word of God. Well, everyone, today marks our week anniversary, and it's been a bit of a learning curve for me, learning how to live stream, but every episode seems to have fewer and fewer glitches. And this morning, I want to give a shout out to uh, some of the people who have been helping and encouraging me. So I want to give a shout out to Abe, a shout out to Jen, a shout out to the Furry Sasquatch, a shout out to John, and to my daughter Lydia, who's been helping out on uh, Facebook with uh, so much of the media aspect of it, and a special shout out to my wife, Heidi. And uh, thank you also to all of you who have been sending greetings and I will include those at the end of each show. Well, let's begin this morning with a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you so very much for your word, and we thank you that you feed us both body and soul. And we thank you as we have been reminded in this time of quarantine and pandemic, we thank you that your word cannot be bound. And we thank you that some of the most fruitful times throughout history and which your word flourishes are times of suffering and hardship and imprisonment and even suffering. And we are reminded of this in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you so very much that the mystery of the gospel is that while the word of God cannot be bound or imprisoned, we thank you that the word was made flesh. And we thank you that you, Jesus, willingly laid your life down for your sheep. And we thank you so very much for the spread of the gospel today. We thank you that you have all authority in heaven and on earth. And uh, we pray that you would now teach us uh, to learn more of what it means to confess with our mouth that you are Lord and to bow before you uh, and to be rejoicing always in the Lord as the Apostle Paul exhorts us. And so we pray that you would lead us by uh, your word and by your spirit and we ask these things in your name jesus that name that has been given and that name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father amen this morning we'll be reading from the book of acts so i'd like you to turn with me in your your bible to acts chapter 16 and uh, we've been reading sections of it and what I'd like to do this morning is to uh, read the, uh, the larger portion of this chapter. So I'm going to be uh, turning in my own Bible to Acts chapter uh, 16. And I'll uh, pull it up for you on the, uh, the screen here in just a moment. <clears throat> so the, uh, the Apostle Paul here in Acts chapter 16 is in Philippi. So this is about... 10 years, as we were learning before the letter to the Philippians was written, and in Acts chapter 16, uh, which is written by Luke, um, one of the interesting things I've, in my study of the New Testament is that uh, Luke, who wrote also the Gospel of Luke, he also wrote the book of Acts, and that makes up almost 25% of the New Testament. So about 25% of the New Testament comes from Luke. And Luke also was a traveling companion with the Apostle Paul for many of his missionary journeys throughout the, the book of Acts. So what Luke is writing, uh, he was also an eyewitness to. So I've uh, pulled up here on your monitor, uh, Acts chapter 16. And uh, we'll be uh, starting in Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. He came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia and went down to Troas, during the night Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. 
After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and we stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside to the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the woman who had women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them down before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he, saw, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushing in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. At, the hour, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. So notice that, how he was filled with joy. Ten years later, Paul is in another prison. And what's the theme again of the letter? Rejoicing in the Lord. So we see the joy of the Philippian jailer. And this is why we're looking at Philippians, so that that joy might be ours as well. So in Philippians 4, Paul says that we are to be rejoicing in the Lord always. I will say it again rejoice. And in Acts chapter 16, we looked at the, the joy of the jailer as he came to know Jesus. Now, last time we looked and asked the question, what hymns were Paul and Silas praying and singing? So Luke says in Acts 16 verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And the best answer I can come up with is that they were singing the Old Testament Psalms. In fact, the, the word here for hymns is also used in the book of Psalms in many of the headings uh, as a descriptive title. And I was reading a commentary this week who said that Paul and pa uh, Silas could have been using any number of the Psalms, which combine both prayer and praise. And the commentator went on to say that Paul and Silas is singing hymns in jail is a concrete 
a tangible or a practical depiction of the Christian ideal of joy amid suffering. So that's why we've been looking at, if you want something that is tangible and practical to help you in your anxiety and suffering, it is singing hymns. Now, asking the question, what hymns might they have been singing? I got a Facebook comment, so thank you very much. I asked for comments yesterday. And on the last episode, one of the comments uh, that I received was, well, could Paul and Silas have been singing a new song? And that's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure if my friend uh, meant by new song, one of the inspired songs of the Old Testament, uh, several of the Psalms, like Psalm 33 and Psalm 40, Psalm 96, Psalm 98, Psalm 144, Psalm 149, they're all, they all refer to themselves as, as new songs. Uh, but I think that my good friend uh, meant by a new song is that, is it possible that Paul and Silas were singing or hymning some kind of new songs that had been memorized and had been written in the first century church? Um, now, if that is the case, if they're singing new songs that have been now lost to the church, uh, that means that we would not be able to imitate Paul. And in fact, Paul exhorts the Philippian church, and the Spirit is exhorting us through Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9 to imitate Paul. So if he is singing uh, hymns of the first century, we can't imitate him in the, the specific hymns that he was singing. Um, but I, I think what really is happening here, in my understanding, is that Luke is making a connection between Paul and Silas suffering for the gospel and Jesus suffering for the gospel. So you might remember that Paul and Silas singing hymns and praying, praying and singing hymns while they are in jail, this is exactly what our Lord and Savior Jesus did on his way to the cross. And as he was on his way to the exaltation to the right hand of God the Father. So we'll look at this a little bit later in this episode, but I think the real connection that Luke is making is that there's a connection between the hymns that Jesus sang as he went to Gethsemane and the hymns that Paul and Silas were singing and the kind of rejoicing that we are to be participating in in our suffering. Remember that Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6 that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Well, part of that good work in bringing it to completion is Philippians chapter 4. Um, I, we have a new slide here. Um, we'll uh, post up a poster of Philippians 4 verses 4 through 9 for you to print out. Uh, like we had a poster last week of uh, Philippians 4 verse 6. Uh, now we're expanding a little bit. We have Philippians 4 uh, verses 4 through 9. So that's uh, what it um, will look like. But I want to draw your attention here to uh, verses 4 and verse 6, and then uh, in verse 9, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Verse 4, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Put it into practice. It should go without saying that Practice and practical are related words. And the point is that if you want something practical for your anxiety, follow the apostle's example. So follow my example. Well, the Philippian jailer heard Paul and Silas singing hymns and praying in jail. The church at Philippi saw it in Paul's life and his other writings. And we are also to be putting these things into practice so that we are not anxious for anything. So that's why I think that one of the most practical and biblical ways uh, for combating anxiety is praying and singing hymns or the Psalms to God. The Psalms are about rejoicing always. The Psalms are prayers. The Psalms contain many thanksgivings. And of course, the reason Paul can say that we are to follow his example in this, whatever you have learned or seen. So one of the things that we've seen in Paul is, is how he sang in prison. Um, we can follow Paul's example in this because he is following the example of Jesus. You remember that after Jesus instituted 
the Lord's Supper, on his way to the cross. What was he doing in the midst of his suffering? He was giving thanks and he was hymning. He was singing. So if you look with me at Matthew chapter uh, 26, I want to point this out to you in verse 26. As the disciples were eating, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So this is why I think there's a connection between what Paul and Silas were doing, praying and singing hymns in Philippi in prison, and what our Lord Jesus was doing with his disciples on the way to Gethsemane as our Lord was on the way to the cross. So on his way to the cross to suffer an accursed death, Jesus was still giving thanks. Jesus was still singing. Indeed, when Jesus was on the cross, the Psalms were still on his lips. The author of Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy, there's that joy, so we're tying in that joy of Philippians 4 with the joy of the Philippian jailer in Acts 16 when he and his household believed and were saved and were baptized. And there's a joy that our Lord had. There was a joy, Hebrews 12 says, that was set before Jesus as he endured the cross, scorning at shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. The Lord Jesus, who is now exalted to the right hand of God the Father, he rejoiced even on his way to the accursed death and judgment of God for the sins of his people. And that's why Paul from prison, and that's why he exhorts us to rejoice in the Lord Jesus as well. So I'll ask the same question I asked last week. Wouldn't it be significant and meaningful if we could figure out some way which hymn Jesus and his disciples sang as Jesus went to Gethsemane and the cross. Well, I think that's what Paul was doing and Silas as they were in prison and the Philippians and the Ephesians and the Colossians, that as they were going through suffering for the cause of the gospel, they understood that suffering in relationship to Jesus Christ. So the best answer I can come up with, and I'm not the, the only person uh, who, has, who has come up with this, um, but I think that Jesus and his disciples were probably singing or hymning Psalm 118. And so I've included Psalm 118. So here is practice. I want something practical for you and for your family. And one of the most practical ways in which we are to be rejoicing so that we are not anxious, so that um, we are teaching our children to do these things, uh, is to sing the psalm. Psalm 118 is a psalm of thanksgiving. It is a psalm of prayer. It is a prophecy. I think this is one of the reasons Jesus sang it on the way to Gethsemane. If this indeed is the hymn that he and his disciples sang after the Lord's Supper, it's about God's delivering the Messianic King, the Christ. God will deliver him from death and the salvation of the King means the salvation of his people. If and because Jesus has been saved from death, we know that we will be saved from death as well. Remember Philippians 1 verse 21, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So this is why singing is part of our, our morning devotions. It helps us to fix our eyes on Jesus. It keeps us praying and rejoicing. Here's something, again, active and practical that you can do. Again, I, I think you should be removing yourself from the news, maybe watching, you know, over only a short bit of the news every day, um, because what's that, that's going to just increase your anxiety. And, and when you're watching the news, it's, it's pretty much just passive. There's nothing that you can do about it. But the scriptures teach 
that there is something active that you can be doing about this present situation. One of the most active and most important, significant things that you can be doing and I can be doing is praying and giving thanks to the Lord. So I'd ask you to please join with me as we sing from Psalm 118. I've included the music on your screen so that you can follow along. And the, the psalm selection here is taken from uh, a CD. You can also buy the MP3 of it, the Songs of Hallel. Uh, these are the psalms, Psalms 113 through 118. And uh, you can get that at crownandcovenant.com. So uh, please join with me as we sing and praise the Lord. Uh, very likely or very possibly with the very same hymn that Jesus sang and his disciples as he went to Gethsemane. And notice the victory of Jesus. Now open wide the gates for me, the gates of righteousness, and I will enter in through them with thanks the Lord of this is the gate that is the Lord's, the righteous enter in. I'm thankful you have answered me, my Savior you have been. The stone is now the cornerstone that builders lost despised. This is the doing of the Lord, and wondrous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made, let us be glad and sing. Hosanna, Lord, who gives success, O Lord, salvation bring. O blessed comes in the Lord's great name, a blessing from the Lord's own house upon you we proclaim. The Lord is God and he to us has made the light arise. With cords bind to the altar forms the festival sacrifice. You are my God, I'll give you thanks. My God, I'll give you praise. Oh, thank the Lord, for he is good. His love lasts and lasts Well, thank you for joining me again for our daily bread. And our shout out this morning is from Larry and Nelly in California. And now you can see in that shout out, they're holding up 1 Corinthians. Uh, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings from Sunny. What, what's that word? Sunny. Uh. I live in central New York. I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, greetings from sunny Oceanside, California, Larry and Nellie. So thank you, Larry and Nellie, for watching. Thank you for the, the time that you have taken the last week to encourage me uh, in uh, this work. Um, and uh, thank you for taking the time now to, uh, to take a picture and to send your greeting in the Lord Jesus Christ to the other saints. You are following the example, the apostolic example where you see many churches sending these kinds of greetings to one another, and this goes back to the first century. So to the rest of our watchers, please send a greeting like Larry and Nelly, or even a, a video. You can get uh, more, you know, as creative as you want uh, with that, and uh, Lord willing, I'll post that on future episodes. So join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. for our Daily Bread, and uh, feel free to email me or Give me a call, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.